Excel's new Copilot function is incredibly controversial. Some think it will ruin spreadsheets, while others believe it'll make most functions obsolete. So in this video, I'll share my thoughts on this, the lessons that I've learned, and a clear set of rules for when you should use the Copilot function. Plus, I'll show you the right way to use it to get hundreds of free credits. So let's go. So we'll first take a look at when to use the Copilot function, and then I'll explain when not to use it. So the Copilot function is great for analyzing text. In this example here, I want to extract all of the items from these wish lists. I'm going to say equals Copilot, we'll tap into that. And I'll just paste in my prompt, which is to extract only the items from the data and create comma separated lists for each row. And then I've referenced the entire range. I'll hit enter, let Copilot do its magic, and it returns these results to a spill range. Now it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to write an Excel formula to do this because some of these values are comma separated, others have different characters here to separate, and there is a lot of other information and names within this text. So it'd be very difficult to write a formula to achieve these results, and Copilot is likely reading through each of these to manually calculate the results. It's not necessarily writing a formula in the background, and I'll talk more about that later in the video. And I have a separate video on 17 ways to use the Copilot function. I'll link that up in the description below. But it's also important to know when not to use the Copilot function. Now my first rule is to only use the Copilot function when other functions, formulas, or features of Excel can't solve your problem. In this example here, I want to split all of these tags and they're all comma separated. So this is relatively easy to do. We can use the text split function here. Just tab into that, this is my text. The column delimiter will just be a comma since they're all comma separated values. Hit enter, that'll produce the correct results here and I'll just go ahead and copy this down. And you might be wondering why not use Copilot here? And there are several reasons. First, there is a limit on how many times you can use the Copilot function, which I'll talk about later in the video. And again, Copilot is going to be taking its best guess on each of these values. In this scenario, it'll probably be pretty accurate, but these large language models can make mistakes and hallucinations, so you'll always need to double check the work of Copilot versus when you're using a built-in function like TextSplit, you can have a lot more confidence that the results are going to be correct. My second rule for the Copilot function is to never use it for numeric calculations. In this example here, I want to get a simple average of all of the math grades in this list over here. Using the average if function, you can see here is the formula here with math being the criteria. It came up with 77.56. When I asked Copilot to do the same thing, it came up with a different answer. Now this is the point in the video where a lot of people would say AI is dumb and completely write it off. But it's important to understand how large language models work. They're really good at predicting text, doing creative writing and coding, but they're not as good at analyzing and calculating numbers as you can see here. But that doesn't mean AI is dumb, at least not in this scenario, it's just about using AI in the right scenario. This would be like using Microsoft Word to create a financial model, when of course there's a better application for that. Now Microsoft has stated that they are working on ways to prevent users from using Copilot for calculations like this, which I think is great. And on the help page for the Copilot function, they also mention that you should not use it for any tasks with legal, regulatory, or compliance implications. And it's also important to note that Microsoft states that the prompts and data supplied as context will not be used to train AI models. Now, one area you can run into issues with Copilot is usage limits. Let's take a look at some tricks to keep you out of trouble. At the time of this recording, you can call or calculate the Copilot function 100 times every 10 minutes and 300 times per hour. So back to this text parsing example, if I was to just reference cell B4 here, and I'll go ahead and hit enter, that's going to return the results here. Now, if I was to copy this formula down, that's going to run the Copilot function 17 times. And so that means I just use 17 of my 100 calls in the next 10 minutes. And you can see it makes some mistakes here. And part of that is due to the fact that it doesn't have any context for the data above it or below it. It's just looking at one single cell. So to work around this, I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. Within the copilot function here, in the context, we can specify a range instead of just a single cell. So instead of B4, I'm going to reference B4 to B20, all 17 rows here, hit enter, and that's going to return a spill range. Now, interesting that copilot got this wrong here. It's not what I expected. So we might need to modify the prompt a little bit. 
I'm going to say for each row and see if that works. And this time it got it right. And here again, I'm just using one call instead of 17 calls. And as you can see, we might need to iterate through the prompt a bit to get the results that we are expecting. So it's really important to specify ranges when you can instead of single cells. And one additional pro tip is to be very descriptive with your prompt so you get the results that you're expecting. I've also run into some limits on the amount of data you can pass to the Copilot function. In this example here, I have this column of very messy dates, and I've used Copilot to standardize it into the following format. And again, I'm passing through this entire range, so it's essentially like getting 127 calls to the function for free. If we jump down to the bottom here, we can see that everything looks good and the spill range spills to the exact row that I've specified in the formula. But if we jump over to this sheet that has a similar example, but 200 dates, if we jump down to the bottom now, we can see that one extra row is spilled. In the formula, I've only referenced cell 201, but this is spilling all the way down to 202, and the results are also not correct down here at the bottom. There is an issue right here where this date is returned twice, and it throws everything off by one row. And again, the results will be different every single time you run the function, so you'll definitely want to check the results here to make sure they're correct. One area that I think can be improved with the Copilot function is recalculation. Let's take a look at how it works. So let's say Johnny changes his mind here and he wants a football instead. When I hit enter now, that's going to recalculate the Copilot function. As you can see, everything recalculated there, meaning we're going to get an entire new set of results, and these could be different from the previous results, even though we only made a change to one cell. So if you're going to go make a bunch of changes to the source data here, each time you do that, it will count against your 100 calculations per 10 minutes. And there's a few things you could do to get around this. You could potentially put an apostrophe here in front of the copilot function so that it doesn't recalculate. If I just remove that, you could also copy and paste the values. So we could take the results here, copy and just paste values over that or paste them somewhere else to keep the values. And you could even turn Excel into manual calculation mode, although I do not recommend doing that for other reasons. And ultimately, I think Microsoft will need to come up with a better way to handle recalculation with the Copilot function. I like the way Google handles recalculation with its AI function in Google Sheets, which is similar to the Copilot function. So if we go make a change to the cell here, you can see that the cell is now has this kind of purple grayed out look to it. And when we click on it, we can click generate and insert to perform recalculation. And again, that button's always visible, so if we want to refresh again, we can just click here to recalculate. And there are other differences between the AI function and the Copilot function. So leave a comment below if you're interested in that, and I'll do a separate video on that topic. In summary, the Copilot function does not replace all functions in Excel. I would reserve it for complex scenarios that can't be solved with regular functions. Knowing when to use AI versus traditional tools is a critical skill in the modern era. To help prepare you, we are creating a brand new training program called AI Literacy for Excel. I'll put a link in the description where you can join the waitlist to get notified when it's available. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you want to see other ways to automate Excel tasks, then check out this video next. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.